All right, welcome to the Tuesday webinar. Um, I've had some questions recently about the team tasks section, and so I would like to show you guys today, um, get into the team tasks, um, how to set it up, um, what sorts of uh, tasks and actions would be included there going into, um, what the first few things you're gonna do when you get set up in the system and some, um, some customizations that you're gonna wanna look at and some um, settings that you're gonna wanna look at when you first um, get going here in REI Solutions. And so for some experienced users, this may be, you know, um, something you've already covered. And, you know, you, of course, can learn a lot of this stuff that I'm going to be sharing in the video training library here as well. And so as I go, I may reference some uh, of the training videos that get into each of these pieces in a little bit more depth. Um, and so I may skim over some things here, but just know that there are full tutorials on a lot of the pieces that I'll be talking about. Um, whether it's, you know, setting up the profit dial or setting up your web tools. Um, you know, I, I'll gloss over some of those things, but know that there are references here in this video training library. Um, and so for uh, new users, um, what you're going to do when you come into the system, um, there's a few key things that you're going to want to look at to get set up and uh, make sure your account is um, squared away and that your marketing profile is set up. And we'll look, take a quick look at that. Um, I want to highlight right now just this bar here, this gray bar at the top of my uh, demo account here. It says, you're low on phone credits. Please add more to prevent the loss of leads. And what that's referring to is the phone credits that are used in the, uh, for the profit dial system. It's a pay-as-you-go system. And you can actually see that status here. I'm going to click to dismiss for now. But if I wanted to add phone credits or if I wanted to see where my credits are at and what my usage is like, I can come to account here in my account. And um, this will be one of the first things you can do when you, you get your account set up is you come to account info and you'll make sure that this account is, uh, the contact info is in place and that your password is set up. And then you can click over to billing subscription details here and you'll see uh, a place to add your default card. This would be um, where, where you'd be able to charge the uh, domains that you might purchase or the phone credits as you use those uh, in the profit dial system. And then here you'll see um, I've got the phone system usage details. I can click on that. Uh, you also see I've got 45 credits left. Uh, when you sign up for REI Solutions, you'll start with 500. There'll be 500 credits loaded in the system for you, ready to go. Uh, and then you'll see the pricing here, and, and you can add credits as you go. Um, so the, the uh, profit dial is a pay-as-you-go system. A lot of, like a lot of um, texting and stealth broadcast systems, the credits are used for those outbound um, for those outbound messages. Um, and so it's a lot like um, easy texting or slide broadcast if you've heard of those types of services. And so when we get into the profit dial, I'll show you a little bit more on that. But again, here's where you'll be able to manage those credits and um, that usage as well and keep track of that. Um, and so as you're going here, right under account, uh, my account, that's one of the first things you'll do as you're setting up your system. Uh, next, you're gonna come to my team here and this is where you would add any additional users you have an option to add up to four additional users uh, and you can you know obviously have your own uh, email address here and then each unique email address for the unique user would be assigned here and then as you click through here you see there's an option to uh, change the permissions and so you can actually um, oh, let's be a little slow here um, now when you click through here let's see if you can get this one to work here there we go. So you click through and you'll see the account is active. Uh, you can even add a phone number in here if you need. Um, just click on that and you can add the phone number, um, whatever it may be. And then you can, of course, look at the permissions here and you can make some choices. So you'll have different team members that are maybe working in different segments of the system. Uh, and so you can allow or deny uh, access to those portions of the system. So for example, uh, we may want to you know, deny access to the animation library and the, uh, the document library because we don't need them, you know, working outside of the content that's available in the, in the client genie. Uh, maybe we don't want them uh, changing the marketing profiles at all, editing there. And so we can change in, uh, the permissions here on a, a per user basis. Um, so that would be one of the first things that you might do. Um, continuing down under account here, uh, you'll see marketing profiles and this is uh, one of the first things you're going to want to do again as you, you're setting up your system 
Uh, you're going to want to make sure this marketing profile is completed and that it's reflecting the content, the, the information that you want merged throughout all of the marketing collateral. And so the email templates, the letter templates, um, any of the you know pieces that you're blasting from the, the client genie, um, the newsletters, all of that stuff is going to be fed here with these contacts, um, this bio, and uh, a company logo if you choose to add that here. Um, and so for sure you want to have a call capture number in there. This would be one of your profit dial numbers. Ideally, you've got your website. Once that's uh, set up, you're going to in include the domain here. And then of course, a, a mailing address. Um, and then you can, you know, choose whether or not you want to include a, a bio of some kind, but this marketing profile is really important because again, it's going to merge with all of the marketing collateral and you can also add additional marketing profiles for your other users. And so if you want, you can set up in Client Genie, and I'll show you this when we get to that portion, you can set up uh, separate marketing profiles so that different emails are coming from different users. So for example, if you have someone that's working with buyers primarily, you can have the buyer emails coming from that, that team member. If you have someone that's doing sales and they're, or they're working with sellers primarily, if they're, if they're on the, um, you know, talking to, to motivated sellers and distressed sellers and, you know, generating leads on that side, maybe you've got the distressed seller emails coming from them. And so you can actually, as you'll see here, this drop down, I've got a couple different marketing profiles. And so you can create the marketing profile here and then it will be available to assign to those different email templates as you go. All right. And so again, as you're just getting started in REI solutions, the first few steps are coming to account, updating your your records here, adding your team members, building out any marketing profiles you want. Um, and then from there, what you're really able to do is come to these various hubs or centers of the system here. And then you're going to start to build out the, the tool set that you're going to use. Um, for sure, a website is one of the first things that you're going to end up doing. And so you can come to web tools and you're going to have an option to build out uh, any number of websites that you want. And so you just click on websites, you launch your uh, website builder. You can see we've got a couple of authority sites here, but if we wanted to create a new site, we could say, okay, well, what kind of template do we want? Um, what kind of content do we want loaded into the site out of the gate? And so we can decide if we're trying to build a, maybe a, a rent to own site um, because we've got a lot of properties that we're able to market to, um, to end buyers, but they're, they're maybe, you know, rent to own type deals. And so we can start to build this site and it's that easy. It'll take a few minutes. The, the system will generate that website with that content and then it'll be available to assign the, a, a new domain. And, uh, and so as you're starting to build your websites, you'll see we can come back to tools and then domain manager. And this is where you might jump in and you might either import or purchase a new domain. Uh, you can purchase domains right through here. This uh, platform is connected with GoDaddy. And so you're able to uh, purchase a domain here and, and enable privacy and all that um, right from this platform. And so it's a quick connection to the website. Or if you've already got a GoDaddy or a third party um, domain manager or a domain uh, registrar, uh, you can purchase the domains there and import them. And it's really easy to do that. You just click import and it carries you through a couple of steps. And so once the domains are available here in the domain manager, they're going to be available to assign to your website. And so if we, uh, you know, we see this one here is assigned to the authority website. And so, you know, just going back to our web tools here, um, we'll see that we've got, you know, now we've got essentially three different sites um, available to use and to market to different, different segments of our market. And so, um, Again, this, uh, the web tools are going to be one of the first things that you do when you jump into the system and start to, to build out your tool set. Um, and again, you have an option to build all types of different websites based upon the uh, templates that are there. And then it's really easy to actually come into the site builder and edit these. Um, you can click on that site builder and it'll open up the uh, website editor. And it's being a little slow here, but um, it's really intuitive to, to click and drag and drop content into the web page and uh, customize that for your own needs. Um, and again, the control panel here would be one of the, the first things that you would fill out here. So this would be our 
demo rent to own site. And so um, again, this would be our company name and we'll add our, our site tagline, your market, uh, your market state. And again, this merges with all of the content on this particular website. And so you can have uh, very specific contact information merging with this particular lease option site that we created or this rent to own site that we created. And now you'll see these other tabs here again for um, building out that website, um, installing your tracking codes if you're doing any sort of uh, pay-per-click, um, editing the theme and the pages if you wanna ultimately customize that a little bit. And so this would be one of those first things you would do once you've built that website. And um, you know we saw how the, the ed editing and the, and the site builder works when you just click on this and then you click on uh, edit page and it allow you to you know, again, edit the content a little bit, and then um, the advanced customizations will allow you to edit and add a logo, um, edit the menu, um, and all that good stuff, all right? And so there's videos, again, in the training library on each of those components, and so I don't wanna get too much into that. We'll, um, we'll do some further, uh, some future webinars on developing and, and customizing websites, and we'll get uh, you know, deeper into that. But for now, again, for this particular webinar, I just want to kind of go over some of those uh, first few things that you're going to be doing as you're setting up your system, as you're, you're starting out in REI Solutions. You know, we covered uh, coming to account and passing through here, building out your uh, account details and marketing profiles. And then we jumped in and created a website and we imported a domain or we, we purchased a domain if we wanted. Um, now what we could really do is come over to the Client Genie and take a look at some of the um, some of the more important customizations that you can do in here. Um, now, of course, you can come in and you'll be adding contacts regularly. Um, and you, if you click on this, you'll see add contact. And you'll see down here all of these extra little fields that we added. These were custom fields that were added to this contact sheet. And where you can do that here is in the settings. And this is, again, one of these first few things that you're going to want to do is you're gonna to start to think about, okay, well, what are what types of contacts are we talking to regularly? If it's you know, motivated, if it's sellers, uh, homeowners, then you may have a series of questions a lot like this, and you, know, you can strategize this in your own way, um, but it ultimately, you've got 20 points of data here that you can collect. Uh, in addition to you know, the name, company, address, this is contact address, uh, phone number, um, and then, of course, your sources, categories, and flags, right? And so in order to add these custom form fields here, uh, custom contact fields, you come to settings and you click on custom fields right here. And so, again, you'll see we've got 20 fields that we can add in. Um, and so I, I would encourage you to, to plot this out a little bit as you go and um, include some of those. Additionally, as you, you go, um, some of these things here in this setting, headlines, you know, and now it's time to blast. And so I've got all these tasks again. If I go back to my, my team task list, and if I am working here, you know, at the beginning of the day, I sort out all my tasks and say, okay, well, you know, I've got that one property here, uh, 3288 Fair Oaks. I know that one's up to bat. And again, I can select all these tasks. I can see them here in this global task list. And, um, and again, I'll, I'll continue to knock these out through the day and I'm not gonna miss anything. I know exactly what's getting done, um, and it's all tied to this property record. Um, and so, again, it's uh, really useful to, to sort these out by, by contact. Obviously, the to-dos that are, are tied to the contact, whether it's the um, you know, following up on the offer, or writing the offer itself, or, or fulfilling the appointment, and those to-do plans are, are tied to those contacts. And then, of course, the property tasks. Um, and those will be tied to the property. Um, additionally, you can have projects. You'll, you may have uh, to-dos and tasks, whether it's for you or your VA. Uh, you may have projects that you want to fulfill and you want to keep track of, track of all of the tasks related to those projects. Um, and so you can actually create a, a fresh project. For example, um, we created one here called the Bird Dog Project. And it was you know, to post a property finders ad, one through three. Um, to rewrite the ads, and you can see, you can even create sections here for ongoing, short-term, and long-term um, sections, so that you can actually use this board as a 
you know, a place to post your long-term tasks. Um, we created a project around a Facebook campaign. And so maybe the tasks that we want to add here would be um, to assign to our sales associate um, research um, Facebook ads, research Facebook ads. Um, that could be due Friday. Um, next task could be. Yeah, thank you. And um, so the next task could be if it was related to a Facebook campaign, it might be, um, you know, create graphics, you know, for ad, um, create, create copy and graphics for ad, you know, so that could be part of the, the tasks. Um, you know, and again, you could create all of the tasks, outline them here, you know, at, at the end of the night or beginning of a day when you're starting to talk to yourself about what your day is going to look like and, you know, what tasks are really at hand, what, um, what maybe unique tasks are coming up in the next day that aren't tied to your day-to-day -day activities of, of following up with seller leads. Um, and so you're able to, you know, use this as a way to um, drive yourself towards some of those bigger projects and bigger tasks that you know are on the horizon and are going to be part of you, you know, continuing to build your system. Um, take you back to the uh, um, Epic Pro Academy real quick here. Um, let's see. In the Epic Pro Academy, we talk a lot about um, the daily success sheet and the um, daily success report, how to get 100 points per day. And right here, if you click on this um, and watch this module, you'll see again how the tasks are kind of lining up here and how they correlate to the tasks in REI Solutions. And that is how you can drive down the tasks uh, or down the success sheet here and kind of towards what we would call the money-making activities of running appointments and submitting offers and, and following up on offers. Um, and how sort of, you know, working through some of these daily activities that are listed here, whether it's, um, you know, broadcast for generating leads or whether it's, you know, creating ad campaigns or whether it's actually, you know, talking to sellers and adding contacts to your database, um, sending thank yous, running appointments, you know, all of these types of tasks are the types of tasks that will turn up on your task list, whether it's coming from, you know, the, the to-do plan that you selected or whether it's coming from the tasks, you know, tied to the property, um, or whether you're starting to focus on creating a, a project around, you know, that next lead generation strategy that you're you're wanting to implement. Um, and so, um, and so, we talked about the to dos here and the contact. Um, let's go back and show you a couple more ways that. Um, tasks can be populated here, tasks can, can turn up on your task list. Um, we, of course, we saw the, the to-do plan that I selected, created, selected for uh, Daniel Alexander. Um, say we wanted to have a, a to-do plan, but we had a few other pieces of the puzzle that we wanted to um, activate at the same time. Um, I would suggest creating an action set, and action sets are really useful, you know, building blocks in the system because it allows you to tick off uh, a to-do plan, autoresponders, um, flags, notifications, um, you know, all that good stuff. And so, for example, if we go to our, our settings here and we look at action sets, um, you'll see I took the seller appointment plan, right, that was the to-do plan and included it here um, in, in the seller prospect action sets. And so this is something I would suggest you'd want to do as you're talking to, to sellers and you're starting to realize that you, you kick off the same to-do plans and the same autoresponders and the same flags pretty consistently. And so, you know, this one right here, seller prospect with appointment and offer, you'll see it's basically, you know, assigning the flag distressed seller, assigning the flag hot prospect category, an email autoresponder, and then there's the to-do to -do plans, both the seller appointment plan, which we highlighted, uh, and then the offer submission plan. And so this would be, this action set would be useful when you had a seller lead that was coming in that you knew was gonna, uh, that you had a great conversation with and they were gonna, you know, you set the appointment and you know that you're gonna be presenting an offer. And so this is that kind of action set that you might 
have available to regularly assign for those types of leads. And, uh, and so for example, if we go back to our, our contact example here, um, Daniel Alexander, let's see. So here's that wholesale seller that we were working on. We, we assigned a, a to-do list here for this, you know, no lead left behind uh, demo to do that we put together. But say we actually were earlier in the process and we were just setting the appointment. We had a conversation and it went well. We set the appointment and we want to tick off the offer. We can actually apply an action set that would include the to do plan, right? And so not only is it selecting the to do plans that we want so that the tasks turn up on there, but additionally, we've got some categorization, some flagging for this contact and, and an email autoresponder. Um, and so this might be an example of the type of, of uh, action set that I would assign because you know it, it gets those tasks on the list and all these other elements are included. And so we we'll click apply and you see all of these things are ticking off here. Um, and you can see all the appropriate flags are there. You can see a whole series of to-dos now have been added. Confirm date and time of seller appointment. You know, maybe we did that on the phone right away. Um, of course, we're gonna jump right in and do our analysis of the property and the pipeline. So we can mark that complete. We're going to write our, prepare a rough offer for the seller. You know, we may get more information while we're the, on, on the appointment, but we want to have some idea of our numbers. So we'll go ahead and work through that. Um, and again, all of these are turning up on the, the global task list as well. All right. Now, um, another area where you can um, populate your task list um, from, basically, is the profit dial. Um, when you're creating your call capture numbers, um, one of the things that you can do is here in the settings, you'll see a flow attached to your number. And so if this is my general line, or maybe it's a postcard line, or it's a, you know, the, the for sale by owner lead generation line, or maybe it's a pay per click line, what you can do is you can decide, what do I want to have happen when somebody calls this? Maybe they'll go to a voicemail, maybe they'll be forwarded to a live responder, uh, maybe there's some other actions or tasks that you want to come out of that phone call. And so what you can do is you're going to create these flows that you assign to the numbers here. And we've got a few of them here that we were working on. We've got um, a direct mail call flow here. Let's work on that one. So if we've got direct mail working and we've got people calling in. Um, we've got the, the contact settings enabled to create a contact record. Right, so it identifies if they're a first-time caller and creates a, a dummy sort of um, unnamed lead record in the client genie, and this is important because it allow you to actually tick off some of those action sets and to dos. There's act an actual contact record where those things can be assigned and applied. So this would be useful um, on a lot of flows. Um, otherwise, it'll just be open to assign contact later, uh, which is also fine. Um, but for this example, I'm, I'm enabling this because what I want to show you guys is we can create this dummy uh, direct mail unnamed lead and then further down in the flow, we can actually have some action sets with to do's that are, are ticked off automatically. So they'll call this number and it'll identify first time callers. It'll create that client genie record. It'll tag that record with a, a flag so that you can always sort those out. It'll lead them to a voicemail. Um, you'll have a notification uh, to call them back. And then you can have an action set. And in this action set here, this is where you can include a to-do. And so, for example, um, you know, direct mail lead follow-up, this action set might include, um, you know, callback. You know, callback lead ASAP. You know, collect contact information, build rapport, you know, complete contact sheet and, and set appointment. And so, if so, and then there's a delay and a stealth voicemail. So there's a bunch of stuff you can build in these flows, but the idea is that, you know, even from the um, call capture system, you can tick off and, and have to-dos that will turn up on your task list, you know, in the form of these action sets, all right? So that's another area where, where um, you know, leads will be coming in and the result will be a to-do here on this task list, all right? Um, and so, you know, we talked about, um, again, this team task list, how to create a team record, a team contact record around a, a unique email. 
Then we talked a little bit about how, you know, different to do's assigned to different contacts will, will turn up, uh, whether it's, you know, the to do plan through a to do plan or an action set that includes a to do plan or a call flow that includes an action set that includes a to do plan. Um, and then we saw, you know, the property tasks, tasks and, and how those templates were loaded and um, how those tasks tied to the property, you know, at that stage in the process. Um, and then we talked a little bit about the projects and how this area can also be used. And, um, you know, maybe it's, you know, uh, weekly team meeting. And it could be um, weekly overview of um, projects, you know, and you could have a, a team section here where people could actually add tasks for each other. And so, you know, adding task for teammate, right? And then you assign it to them and you give them a due date and you can actually assign, you know, priority, high priority for my teammate. And it's tied to a particular project, right? And so there's definitely lots of ways you can use this project space to organize your and your team's actions and activities. Um, it's a great way to stay focused and to not lose track of, you know, where you're at in a particular process. You know, maybe you got halfway through the process with Daniel and you could say, oh, it's time to follow up call on the offer. And so, you know, the fact that you've got this turning up in your email inbox through the agenda assistant and the fact that, you know, it's here in your face, you've got an opportunity there, you know, to fulfill the actions that are going to make a difference in your business. Um, and so hopefully this has been helpful and I'm definitely open to taking a couple questions. I've got a few minutes. Um, thank you for joining me, you know, and I, I for sure will have much more to share next week. Um, you guys can bring uh, up questions or um, issues if you have, you know, topics that you want to cover in future webinars. Um, shoot me an email through here. And um, otherwise, you know, there's the link to join us for future webinars. Um, looks like there's maybe one question here. But um, nope, nope, not a question. But yeah, that's about it for today, guys. Thanks again. Um, again, you'll see the, oh, the task summary here right on the dashboard. So if you ever have to click through to that and, um, you know, so it's a good place to start each day. And then uh, let me know as questions arise. Thanks, guys. It's a dead deal and we just want to get it out of our list here. We could go ahead and archive it. We'll archive that property and we could always go back and look at the archived list. Right. So. Again, the inbox, the property pipeline inbox here is another area where you're going to start to track your activity um, as you're, in, you're carrying these deals through the pipeline. Um, and so that's about it for today um, as we run out of uh, time here. Um, if you have any immediate questions, feel free to throw them in the chat box. Uh, I've got a couple minutes. Um, otherwise, you can always ask me, access me through this support tab. And so if you have questions, send me an email or give us a call or, you know, um, join us next week. Like I said, next week, we'll get into the profit dial quite a bit. We'll spend a half an hour really diving deep on some profit dial strategies. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's what I've got for you guys. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time and effort, guys. Keep up the great work. Uh, let me know as questions arise.